Hi, Mike McMillan here for the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Today I'll be re reviewing the role of a table captain at a KCBS sanctioned barbecue contest. The duties of the table captain are extremely important to the success of any barbecue contest. Normally you'll perform your duties standing in front of the center of a table. On occasion you may be asked to perform double duty, serving both as a judge and as a table captain. In those cases, you should sit on the end of the table or another place which allow you to easily get up and down. As a table captain, you're responsible for maintaining control of your table and keeping the flow of entries timely. You may choose your table or one will be assigned to you. However, you must remain at the same table for the entire contest. The judges will receive their instructions before the judging starts. Therefore, as table captain, you are not to instruct judges on how to score an entry, try to influence the judges with your personal judging beliefs, answer any questions by the judges, all questions should be referred to the KCBS rep, and or point out any violations of rules. We're looking for six opinions, not seven. Before the judging begins, make sure that each judge has a pen or pencil, a judging plate, and a scorecard. Also make sure that the judges have access to the following items on the table. Water, crackers, toothpicks, paper towels, or napkins. Prior to the beginning of each category, make sure the judges have circled the correct category at the top of the judging slip, printed their name and their CBJ number at the bottom, and written their table number below their CBJ number. To help make the judging process flow smoother, you may ask the judges to assist you with cleaning the tables between the categories, replenish the water, napkins, or crackers, resetting the table with judging slips and plates. At all KCBS contests, the team's handwritten number is on the top of the box. A KCBS contest rep or assistant will paste an alternate numbered label over the team's handwritten number. While this task is being performed, you are asked to stand far enough away so as not to be able to read the numbers. Once six turn-in containers have been renumbered, you will be called over to get your serving tray. Do not rearrange the turn-in containers. They should be in random order. Note that in some cases, you may have fewer than six turn-in containers. At some very large contest, you may be asked to select your own turn-in containers once they've been renumbered. You may notice that the contest rep or his assistant has put handwritten numbers one through six on one corner of the turning containers. This has been done to help prevent mishandling once you've gotten back to the table. If the reps have not put the numbers one through six on the top of the turn in boxes, you should do so before leaving the distribution table. Start with the turn in containers in the upper left hand corner and work across the top. Continuing number on the bottom row, working from left to right. The handwritten number should never be communicated to the judges as they are there for your use only. You are to immediately go back to your assigned table. Carry the serving tray as if you were carrying nitroglycerin. Carefully place the serving tray far enough onto the table so as it won't tip off. If necessary, ask the judges to move any items back that might interfere with the serving tray. Some table captains will use a couple of extra chairs and place their serving tray on them to protect it. The worst thing you can do as a table captain is drop the serving tray. Once you're sure that the serving tray is safe and secure, fill out your table captain's list. This form is used to track which entries have already been to your table. The goal is to prevent the same entries from going to the same table every time. In the upper left, print your name and table number Copy the entry numbers on the top of the turning containers onto your table captain's list in the order they are assigned on your serving tray below the correct category. And strike through the last two digits on the entry number in the 01 to 00 section of the form. Never use a turning container to write on when completing this form. Most table captains perform this task while reading the entry numbers to the judges. Just remember to go slow as the judges have to write in two places. On the judging slip, the entry numbers are written working down the form, top to bottom. You'll notice that the new judging slip has seven places for scoring entries. 
On occasion, judges may be asked to score an additional entry. On the judging plate, the entry numbers are started at the top row working across the plate, working from left to right. Then on the bottom row, you'll also work from left to right. Should you be asked to score a seventh entry, draw a diagonal line across the bottom right box and write the entry number in the lower right corner. You'll have to work at the pace of the slowest judge and watch to make sure the judges are putting the numbers in the correct places. Once you have the table captain's list completed for this category, fold it up and put it away. Okay, by now you should have set the table with the judging supplies, picked up your entries, and had them safely on the table. Read off all the numbers, filled out your table captain's list, announced the category being judged, and now is a good time to remind the judges not to talk during the judging process. Also remind the judges not to lick their fingers between taking samples from the turn-in container. Remind judges to wait until after all judges have scored a particular entry before pointing out any potential rule violations. As table captain, it's not your job to point out any rule violations to judges. Boys can get a KCBS contest rep so they can make a ruling and advise judges on the proper procedure for disqualifying an entry. One at a time, you will show all the entries in this category for appearance of the meet. Beginning by picking up the turning container with the handwritten number one on it, announce the entry number, and then carefully open the lid so that it doesn't block the view of the judges. Working from left to right, slowly display the turning container to the judges and count 1001, 1002, 1003 to yourself before moving between judges. Judges are not allowed to touch the turning containers or samples during appearance scoring. Do not allow distribution of the samples from the turn-in container at this time. After the last judge has scored the entry for appearance, close the lid, pick up the next turn-in container, announce the entry number, and follow the same procedure as before. Continue this routine until the rest of the entries on your serving tray have been scored for appearance. Watch to make sure that the judges are putting the scores in the correct place. When judging for appearance, judges should be writing from top to bottom on the judging slip. To assist with the taste and tenderness portion of this program, I've asked the volunteers to serve as judges. After all the samples have been presented and scored for appearance, select the turn-in container with the handwritten number one on it, announce the number 119 to the judges, open it up and hand it to the first judge. While they're taking their piece and passing it to the next judge, get the second container ready and, and pass it to the judge. Continue this process until you have passed out all the containers. If you work quickly, you can just about have all the turning containers handed out before the first turning container makes it back around to the table. Once all the entries have been passed out to the judges, they may begin sampling for taste and tenderness, and you should move the serving tray and the turning containers to the leftover table. You're welcome to sample from the leftovers, but be sure everybody has gotten a bite to eat before packing and taking things home in a turning container. You're welcome to graze, but keep an eye on your table to make sure that there are no issues regarding the judging. Check your table periodically. If all the judges have finished scoring the entries, pick up the scorecards and check for legibility and consistency. If you can't read somebody's handwriting, call out the judge's name and ask them to correct the, any deficiencies. Bring any discrepancies to, to, of scoring to the attention of the KCBS rep immediately. Count to make sure that you have six judging slips before taking them to this person entering the scores. Remember, judges may not give a score of one without a KCBS rep's approval, and 10 is not a valid score. Have someone clear the table while you go get new judging plates and judging slips. By now, it's probably time to start at the next category, so go get in line for your next group of entries. As a courtesy to other table captains, if you are first in line, please go to the end of the rear of the line this time. Also, when you get back to your table, Start at the opposite end of the table so the judges will not always be the last ones getting their uh, turn-in trays. On behalf of the Kansas City Barbecue Society, the judges, teams, and the organizers, we thank you for being a table captain.